O Great Spirit, God of every people and every tribe, we come to you as your many children to ask for your forgiveness and guidance. Forgive us for the colonialism that stains our past, the ignorance that allowed us to think that we could claim another's home for our own. Heal us of this history. Remind, Remind us, us that, that none of us, us were discovered since none of us were lost, but that we were all gathered within the sacred circle of your community. Guide us through your wisdom to restore the truth of our heritage. Help us to confront the racism that divides us as we confess the pain it has caused to the human family. Call, Call us to kinship. Mend the hoop of our hearts and let us live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, the one who came that all people might live in dignity. Amen. Christianity included a triumphalistic spirit of world conquest. Pope Nicholas V decreed in the papal bull Romanus Pontifex, Invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens and pagans, and all movable and immovable goods possessed by them, and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. The arrival of Christopher Columbus in the Americas in 1492, financed by Spain's Ferdinand and Isabella, was the beginning of colonization of this land and its inhabitants. The motivations for expansionist aggression were power and financial gain. England soon followed Spain and Portugal with colonization in the name of God and King. A church that was once persecuted for proclaiming God's shalom in the world later on proclaimed the doctrine of discovery under King Henry VII. Christian sovereigns and their representative explorers could assert dominion and title over non-Christian lands with the full blessing and sanction of that same church. Manifest Destiny a term that was coined in 1839 and revised in 1845 to sanction the colonization of North America. It was used to designate the belief that the United States was destined, even divinely ordained, to expand across the North American continent. Thousands were murdered and relocated in the name of Manifest Destiny. By 1920, 99% of all Native Americans were wiped out. In 1955, a typical practice incorporating Native Americans into the Christian Church can be found in the opening invitation of the Niobrara Catechism. What name did your parents give you? My name is Owe Shicha. What is your baptismal name? My baptismal name is Nellie Badwound. Nellie, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The church told native Hawaiians, wear our clothes, speak our language, give up your spiritual traditions, stop dancing and singing your songs, stop using your medicine and healing rituals, give up your heathen ways and act like us, because that's how Christians act. Many and great, O God, are thy works, maker of earth and sky. Thy hands have set the heavens with stars, thy fingers spread the mountains and plains. Lo, at thy word the waters were formed, deep seas obey thy voice. English words to a Dakota hymn long associated with 38 Dakota men who were hung on December 26, 1862 at Mankato, Minnesota, ordered by President Abraham Lincoln. As the condemned 38 walked through their execution, it is said they sang this Dakota chant. Today, this hymn reminds us of starvation, misunderstanding, mistrust, and hatred that led to the largest mass execution in the history of the United States. Four days after Christmas of 1890, 150 Lakota men, women, and children were shot by members of the U.S. 7th Military Cavalry at the Pine Ridge Reservation. The wounded and dying were taken to a makeshift hospital in the local Episcopal Church. Above the pulpit hung a Christian banner which read, Peace on Earth, 
goodwill toward men. Misunderstanding and ignorance about Native people resulted in tragic events like the sterilization of Native women. To what end did the Episcopal Board of Missions write in 1906 to 1907? The Church has ever recognized her duty toward the Indians. Many of them have abandoned the wigwam and the teepee, and built for themselves comfortable homes in which to dwell, and became tillers of the soil. Superstition, ignorance, and savagery have given way to higher standards of morals, as the schoolhouse and the chapel have pushed their way into their habitations. Somehow, Christian values of goodwill and charity did not extend to Chief Joseph's people, the Nez Perce. In 1877, he said, I am tired of fighting. Our chiefs are all killed. The old men are all dead. He who led the young men is dead. It is cold and we have no blankets. The little children are freezing to death. My heart is sick and sad. From where the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever. In 2008, presiding Bishop Catherine Jeffert Shorey opened a summit on poverty by asking three questions. One, how can we help to break the cycle of poverty? Two, how can we become a place of refuge and healing for the most vulnerable members of our society? And three, how might we be a prophetic voice for those who find themselves stuck in dead-end situations? Centuries of promises made and broken form part of the heavy links between the history of our nation and the present realities for Native people. Forgiveness is not words, it is action. Native communities experience epidemic suicide rates, extreme levels of unemployment, alcoholism, drug addiction, gang violence, rape, and domestic violence. The healing journey leads beyond the mere alleviation of poverty into the abundant provision of a generous creator that seeks only that all creation would grow to its fullness of possibility and hope. To acknowledge its regret for this history of domination and violence, the Episcopal Church adopted Resolution D-035 for the explicit purpose of repudiating and renouncing the doctrine of discovery. In many ways, Indian ministry of the Episcopal Church began in response to the Minnesota Uprising of 1862. After years of government treachery and deceit, the Santee people rose up and broke free of the Minnesota Valley Reservation. Many lives were lost. And despite the fact that Christians among the Santee saved the lives of missionaries and some settlers, all of the surviving Indians were imprisoned and later expelled to the Dakota Territory. First convened in 1870, the Niobrara Convocation in the Dakotas continues to meet annually as an intentional commitment of the Episcopal Church aimed at bringing relatives together. Creator, we give you thanks for all you are and all you bring to us for our visit within your creation. In Jesus, you place the gospel in the center of the sacred circle through which all of creation is related. You show us the way to live a generous and compassionate life. Give us your strength to live together with respect and commitment as we grow in your spirit. For you are God, now and forever. Amen. While we can say that no one living today generated these destructive abuses in the name of Christ, nevertheless, the structural world we have been adopted into has been undeniably shaped and determined by the historic forces of empire. Will you decide to reinforce those worldly structures, or will you reshape those structures to better serve Christ and all your brothers and sisters? In 1997 and 2006, 
the General Convention of the Episcopal Church, past decades of remembrance, recognition, and reconciliation to fully recognize and welcome Native peoples into the Episcopal Church, leading to the 2009 resolution to repudiate the doctrine of discovery, calling the Church to review its policies and programs with a view to exposing the historical reality and impact of the doctrine of discovery and eliminating its presence in its contemporary policies, program, and structures. To reflect upon its own history in light of these actions and encourage all Episcopalians to seek a greater understanding of the indigenous peoples and to support those people in their ongoing efforts for their inherent sovereignty and fundamental human rights as peoples to be respected. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers, to persevere in resisting evil, to proclaim the word and example of the good news of God in Christ, to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself, and to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with with God's God's help. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your needs in parched places, and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like spring of water, whose waters never fail. With God's help, we will. Amen. Isaiah 58, verses 6 and 11.